I think a lot of it is being able to give back what you've what you've learned, and that's just probably the, the number one thing is helping people and seeing them grow. It's so rewarding. All right, uh, welcome to the most recent podcast of our interviews with our instructors at Watts Atelier. Um, this is Lucas Graciano, and he's one of my uh, my best teachers. He's been with me for how long now? About ten years. Ten years. Yeah, so uh, so ten years, and so I've brought him in to uh, talk to him a little bit about his career. Uh, his insights into education, his education, uh, different things, different questions. Uh, if you've watched some of the other podcasts, uh, you'll be familiar with some of the questions. They'll be very similar, but uh, everyone will have different insights. So we're going to go ahead and uh, start with a brief background of your education and jobs and stuff, just uh, you know, before you came in and kind of what you've experienced since coming to the atelier. Mm -hmm. um, out of high school, I started doing work as a caricature artist at Legoland uh, for a company called Commons Art. And that's where I first heard about the school. One of the students that was taking classes had uh, told me about it. And this is when you were in Del Mar. So I came down to check mm -hmm. it out. And it was cool. I don't know if I was ready at the time, you know, where I was at. Um, I, I know I definitely wanted to get better. Um, but uh, just trying to figure it out. At the time, I was taking classes at, uh, at a local junior college, Palomar. Mm -hmm. Had some, some, uh, some pretty cool intensive classes there. But, I mean... You know, nothing like what we got yeah. here. And I remember you didn't you didn't come right in. You you must have come and visited at Del Mar, but you didn't come in until we were up at Westlake, right? Right. Yeah. My first classes were in Encinitas. Um, and even then, it took me, I think it was about a year after I first saw you down there to come up and take classes and then another year to really get serious. I think I was doing like one or two classes <laughs> yeah. a term and they were usually specialty classes like the concept classes or perspective or things like that. Um, but what was nice about that is I was able to uh, get a job. Uh, working concept and visual development about a year and a half after I was taking class, um, which allowed me to pay for more classes and continue mm -hmm. my education. So that was nice. And that's when I started taking it more seriously, uh, you know, doing the, the, getting the importance of uh, figure drawing and all that. And um, that's when I was doing like more like four to six classes a term. Yeah, because the first year here, I think most students would agree that it's kind of a, not a give me, but you just don't even know if it's the right fit. Or... Right. So that first year is, is kind of, um, I don't normally count it all that much. It's mostly getting acclimated to the environment and mm -hmm. whether or not the classes are something you would want to do. Right. Yeah, I remember you coming in. I mean, I brief. Well, how old were you at that time then? You were... I was early 20s, like 21, 22. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Because I remember, it seems like just yesterday, but it, but it, it uh, time goes so fast. Yeah. I can't believe you've been teaching for 10 years and been here for 10 years. Yeah, so. that's crazy. Well, that's, um, quick. yeah, so, do, uh, and then your job, so you, st I mean, I, that was Sony that you were working for, right, freelance? Yeah, and that, what was great was that uh, taking classes, there was a, a guy who was up here who worked for Sony, and I had just banned my portfolio at the time, and he said, hey, we're looking for people, so it was in class, and yeah. I gave my portfolio, he, he gave it to the director, and the next day they called me, like, hey, come on down, Yeah. and it, it was just great. That's I mean, the best way for so those good. things to happen. Seriously. Yeah. And that's what I, I love that, that we have people in the school, like art directors, like Jeremy Cranford, and mm -hmm. people like that, that actually can, you know, hire some of the younger guys yeah. that are just getting started, yeah. you know, so that's good. Um, also, favorite periods of art and illustration, which I know you're probably similar to, I don't know if you're similar to Eric or not in that regard. I, I watched Eric's interview. Yeah. Uh, there, there's definitely a lot of guys I like that he liked. Um, I'm a big fan of Phil Hale's work, um, John Foster, particularly his older stuff. Um, his new stuff's great too, but I, I definitely um, relate more to his, his older stuff, more of a darker fantasy. Um, uh, periods of art. I really enjoy the uh, the Pre-Raphaelites and the uh, Orientalist period. Um, kind of Waterhouse, uh, Edwin Austin Abbey, those kind of artists who are, they paint that kind of uh, romantic, uh, almost epic narrative type stuff. Um, I, I really uh, like a lot of that kind of work and um, can hopefully see myself doing stuff similar to that down the road, um, uh, moving into fine art if I decide to do that. But even your illustration has a lot of that in it. I mean, you can see it in the armor and how you handle yeah. certain... I, I can't anyway. I mean, I, I think yeah. maybe just because I know you so well, but um, it's been a really neat thing to watch you kind of... When, I, when you did... I remember when you did this Barg study, which was similar. It was an Orientalist type mm -hmm. piece and lots of accoutrements and all right. kinds of stuff and patinas. And um, I remember how well you did that. And I thought, you know, this guy's going to be a really tight painter. <laughs> yeah, I, didn't, I didn't know. I mean, I didn't know yeah. where... So it was really fun to watch you actually become a hybrid of both tight and loose because it's very difficult for some people to do that. Mm. I mean, if they're wired tight, they usually just have a very difficult time right. indicating losing information. So, right. Well, I think, I think I'm attracted more to a looser painting. I, you know, Richard Schmidt's one of my favorites. Um, and I'm trying to bridge that, find that bridge in illustration. It's just so difficult because a lot of art directors like that real tight look. 
Um, and uh, I think doing that study was nice because it, it gave me the skills. I think a lot, a lot of the skills it took. Yeah. I mean, I picked it on, on purpose because of everything it had and it had a really cool face, had hands, had drapery, had still life. All the different textures I would learn, need to learn to paint in illustration. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, after doing the painting, I realized, eh, I can't do, I couldn't do this for a living. <laughs> the tight, the tight it's not my uh, personality, but, uh, you know, I, I tend to, I don't know, I guess I'll fall back on a lot of the tighter stuff in my illustration, which I think is kind of a bad thing in my own work, but. I don't no, know. It's, it's, it's one of those things I think we all have those tendencies and it's whether you have a tendency to be loose and chaotic or you tend to be more tight or uptight or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it. I mean, we're going to go when we're tired or when under clutch situations, you're going to kind of go back to that, mm -hmm. it seems like. Yeah. So, yeah. So, um, favorite deceased artist and living artist. I mean, I know it's favorite. You probably have favorites, not right. favorite, but, you know. Um, yeah. Uh, it's hard to say pick one, but definitely different artists for different things. Um, I really love Waterhouse's work, Jerome's work. I know those guys are two pretty two different uh, aspects of you know the, the playing field are on two different ends. But um, those two guys are one of my favorite. I like Bougro's work, very tight. He's one of those guys I think achieved a, a real tight look, but still had a nice kind of emotion and life in the paintings, in mm -hmm. my opinion. Um, Jerome was right there too. He, he bored a little, maybe too tight in, in, for my taste, but. Uh, Man, the guy's, it's, it's hard to argue. He's so darn good. Um, as far as living guys, uh, I really like Schmidt's work mm -hmm. and uh, Lip King's work a lot. Um, some illustrators, are, they're doing really well. Like Patar Mesedjula, he's a Serbian painter living in the Netherlands. He's awesome. Um, have you seen his work? No, I haven't. What oh, an odd man. combo. You would like his. <laughs> he's very chunky. He's like a very chunky Frazetta. Oh, that's cool. It's really cool. This stuff's <laughs> awesome. Has he just recently gotten recognized? Or, yeah. Cause, yeah, because I haven't heard much about him. Yeah, so. he, he, uh, he did comics very similar to Frazetta style, um, a lot of the Tarzan and Conan yeah. and things. Um, but uh, he's, he's been doing it a long time, but uh, I think he's just now getting the recognition here oh, in the States. And, it's always fun with you guys because I don't go off into those genres as much as I used to when I used to work in similar stuff that you guys are doing. So now I get to live vicariously, and you guys are bringing all these influences <laughs> and people I have no idea. I haven't really been following. It's, you have to, it's so hard to follow your own niche area that you're trying to you know it's yeah. like it's hard to be you know all over the place but um yeah that's a name i'll have to look up for sure because it's not one i'm very familiar with um did you go to the jerome show a couple years ago i did we yeah i think that it, was phenomenal yeah that was oh, one that man, man that, that show blew me away i mean and i'm not even that apt to be into that uh well not i love any good work from any genre mm -hmm. so the tightest guys in my you know alma tadema you know jerome mm -hmm. Bugro, they're all so impressive, but um, that was that blew me away. That show, pretty phenomenal. That was a really nice show. I just can't believe how prolific he was for how tight he painted. I mean, yeah, every I, painting was just makes my arm and back and neck and everything else hurt just <laughs> looking, looking at, at it. it. Still, you know, I'm just like, how do you do that? Yeah. Um, biggest breakthrough, like when? What do you think the biggest breakthrough was for you? I was going over this question when I, when I, <laughs> I was like, oh, I'm going to answer this. Um, you know, I, I I thought about it for a while, and I, I think the, the as far as a breakthrough in my career, it was doing the Aluxcon show. Mm -hmm. That's that show that Eric and I will do and Mike will do um, every year. It's in uh, Pennsylvania, and it's this really intimate show, 50 artists. Uh, Pat invited me out about four years ago to, I think it was their second show, and this was the first show I'd ever, I would have ever done, any kind of convention. And uh, I had started considering doing convention work, but um, I, I wasn't really, you know, wasn't, I wasn't actively pursuing it. But um, I knew it was going to be a very important part of, of my career is to start doing these conventions. So um, I, all my fiber was telling me, uh, you know, it's, it's just too soon, too early. But I, I agreed to it anyway. I said, okay, I'm going to do it. I mean, the guys on the roster, Donato, Brom, I mean, all these guys are just the top yeah. of the top of the, uh, the illustration world. Um, I was like, I'll, I'll go and try it out and see, you know, how it goes. And, um, you know, I, my first year there... Pat set me up. Pat Wilshire is what him and Jeannie Wilshire put on the show. And, um, uh, he sets me up right next to Brom, who's industry veteran, Don Mice, who's industry veteran, Larry Elmore across the way, Dan DeSantos. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh, man. But it was cool. I mean, everyone was so sweet. Brom was a sweetheart of a guy. Um, Larry Elmore, great, great guy. Um, and uh, everyone was very uh, warm to my illustrations and, and made me feel very welcome. And um, I sold about half my work and a bunch of prints, and uh, it was just the best thing I could have done. 
I met a bunch of art directors that I've been wanting to work with that hired me that year. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that show alone is, is really was a big uh, turning point in my career. Yeah, that's I've heard such great things about that show. And I know how intimate and hard it is to be invited to it. So yeah. that was a huge... You know, yeah. I mean, I'm glad you took that risk. Yeah. yeah so you've done it all four years now? Um, I did it. Uh, last year was the first year I missed. Um, yeah. But I had done the last three years, and I'm, I'm hoping to get in next year. It's juried now. So okay. they, I think Fred Ross from ARC, he's oh, one, yeah. of the, one of the uh, juries, uh, the, uh, jury members. Um, John Shindahiti, uh, industry director. So they got some good good people. Yeah. Yeah. That's and all cool. around, too, which is nice. they got the fine artists. What Pat and Jeannie are really trying to do is, is bring – uh, a more recognition to illustrative art. Um, they're calling it imaginative realism based on James Gurney's book. And they're, um, this is the first year that ARC is having a, um, a category for imaginative realism. So are you, are you interested in that or? I've thought about it. I, you I, should. I, think I, might. You should. And I really we'll think that would be a good idea. I'm thinking of entering some stuff. I haven't done that competition in a few years and it's such a good organization. Mm -hmm. So happy to be a part of it. So, but that would be neat to see you guys, you know, put some stuff yeah. in because yeah, I'm sure you cool. do really well. That would be really good. So most unexpected aspect of being a professional, like what really probably you weren't prepared for or, or just didn't think, it could be good or bad. I mean, just what, what was the most unexpected part? This was another one of those questions. I was like, man, I took some thinking. Um, I mean, as cheesy as it sounds, I think just doing art itself, you know, I mean, I grew up looking at those little Frazetta and Boris cards and, you know, wow, this is so cool. And I always drew and doodled a little you know, I was younger, but um, to think I could actually do that for a living, you know, down the road, it was pretty phenomenal. And it just, it's a little surreal. Um, there's a lot of, it's not all romantic, mm -hmm. but um, it's, it definitely has its, it's, it's definitely a job, but it's a lot cooler than most jobs. And, yeah. You know, it's, yeah. Uh, who's, you know, who's really rocking it today? I mean, who's really, you know, I mean, you've already kind of touched on it. I mean, the people that you mm -hmm. admire, but I mean, the, you know, anybody in particular that you really just say, wow, you know, I mean, yeah, there's a few guys out there right now. I mean, a lot of the guys I work with on the magic, uh, the magic card game, magic, the gathering. Um, it's just every time that set comes out, I look at my work compared to what they're doing. I'm like, Oh man, I should have done a little bit more extra effort in my, yeah, you know, yeah. but, uh, oh, man, who, like Chris Ron, he's killing it. Uh, he's, he's one of my favorites right now. Real nice guy. I've met him a few times and, um, very humble and a real sweet guy. Um, Patar is another one. I mentioned him mm -hmm. earlier. He's, he's really doing well. Um, he's got a really nice, uh, I like how he, his paint application is really cool. Um, a lot of fun to look at his original work mm -hmm. um, for as most, most illustrators will paint more thin, you know, and it's not as you get up on close and it's, it's cool to see the, the draftsmanship is great. But when you see Patar's work with thick chunks and mm -hmm. it's, it's stuff that you'd really gravitate <laughs> yeah, I'd towards. probably really get a kick out of it. Um, yeah, but the, probably those two guys are, are guys I'm watching a lot right now. Um, there's another guy we've been we've gotten to know pretty well, Eric Belhagen. He's really doing some cool stuff. He's he's mixed uh, Frazetta and Schmidt in a really cool level. Paints huge, and um, the, it's it's just really cool to see a very loose painter like that doing well. Yeah, that's amazing. That genre is just um, I can see it elevating itself, kind of like what Frazetta did to it, but on a grander scale now, mm -hmm. up to. Um, that fine art status because yeah. it never should have not been considered that because right. it's such a hard genre to work in. I mean, having done a lot of that kind of work, that imagination just tapping you out with your knowledge base. It's right. got to be such a higher knowledge base to me. Yeah. People you know? are getting, I think the education's gotten a lot stronger um, now and uh, there's some really good people that are coming out. Yeah, so, I agree. Competitions. That yeah, much yeah, I know. It's just going to keep getting more. So that's why I keep. Um, telling the younger students coming in and as well as you guys watching you guys is that you really can't rest on your laurels. I mean, you got to be yeah, studying 24 yeah. seven. It never stops. I mean, yeah. I don't know many careers that demand that of their, of, of the, of the people doing it, you know, just constant, constant, constant work. So let's see if you could paint anything, what would it be? I and mean, we may already be doing it, but I mean, you know, yeah. if you could paint any subject matter, anything, what would, what do you think you would, would be doing? Right now, I, I love doing what I'm doing. I, I love painting the fantasy stuff, you know, dragons and sorcerers and whatever. Uh, I, I love that kind of stuff. It's kind of it allows me to be a kid, I think, a little bit longer, which is great. And um, I've always been inspired by that stuff growing up watching movies like Dragon Slayer and mm -hmm. you know a lot of those old '80s uh, fantasy movies, Lord of the Rings. Um, I think down the road, I would like to move into fine art, um, a more kind of maybe more of a storytelling storytelling illustration uh, career. Um, 
doing stuff very similar to what like Waterhouse and um, Alma Tadema and mm -hmm. um, Jerome. You know, I, I really like that kind of classic uh, period, um, painting a lot of like maybe mythology or biblical type stories, um, stuff that's kind of epic narrative, I guess, yeah. is how I would describe it. Yeah, yeah. I can see you doing really well in that. I mean, and I, we talked about that when you were first starting because, you know, now you're kind of a family and you're moving in that direction. Mm -hmm. And the fine art thing is a wonderful road, but what a hard one. I mean, Seriously. they're all hard, but that one in particular, yeah. <laughs> it's nice to kind of, um, I think, cut your teeth in illustration like you're doing, get mm -hmm. your, get your um, discipline really high, get your you know, work ethic really high, mm -hmm. which you've already done. I mean, and I'm sure you'll excel in fine art as well. I have no doubt that uh, that, that will not be a hard transition mm -hmm. for you. Yeah, you had mentioned early on when I was at that kind of, Cost, I was like, oh, illustration or fine art? You're like, illustration. You, know, yeah, you didn't yeah. say it, but you were kind of I like... was pretty pretty <laughs> adamant about... Um, I mean, you know, again, I can't choose people's uh, paths or their course of actions, but, you know, I try to guide them as best I can as an instructor or a friend or whatever. And a lot of you guys were my students, but now are kind of just equals, and, and um, it's really fun. To, you know, when you're, you're still kind of, you know, you can kind of see someone else's path a lot clearer than your own. I mean, I know I've had a hard time picking and navigating through my own path. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you can just see somebody and say, you know, they really should be a conceptor. I mean, that's yeah. really what they're tailor-made to do or, or whatever. Um, and for you, I think just because of the path I knew you were going to be taking, I think, um, yeah, the fine art thing, although it's possible, it just would have been a long, yeah. difficult, arduous road. And mm -hmm. there's plenty of time for you to venture into that. So mm -hmm. I think um, you, you chose wisely. <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, yeah. it, was, it was a good call. So let's see, um, favorite art assignment or job or least favorite? Like some maybe favorite and least favorite. Do you have um, ones? Um, I'm sure you do. But. Yeah. Uh, favorite job, um, I was, it was this year. I, I was commissioned a big, uh, uh, it was a very epic narrative. I, I kind of got to, to paint, um, try out kind of what I was thinking I'd maybe do later on. Um, but this, this guy had commissioned maybe a dozen artists to do this very same theme. Um, the only parameters he gave us was it needed to have a drag, a companion dragon, two women, and a dog. He says, other than that, go, go for it. Have at it. How cool is that? Oh, man, <laughs> it was so cool. So I painted this, this um, kind of Mongolian-esque scene of these, these women escaping um, this, this dragon that's hunting them, coming up over this, this mountain hill, and, uh, and then uh, this, their companion dragon coming and swooping in and protecting that. Yeah. That, that group of, of women and, and then the dog is is kind of trying to get the you know get in the action trying to fight with the dragons but it was cool it was a lot of fun um it was the biggest painting i'd done at that time um and uh, it, it was very liberating and, and i just felt so free painting it it, yeah. it was just a really cool experience very cool so i think that's by far my favorite uh, commission <laughs> well, um future goals Future goals, uh, touched on a little bit, but right now it's, it's raising my daughter, you know, <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. She's amazing. Uh, it's very difficult as a freelance artist to, to balance that, to find time. Um, my wife works during the day, so I, I, I work at nights and on the weekends when I can. Um, I'm still trying to figure it out. It's very, very difficult, but, um, I mean, like I said, she's wonderful and I wouldn't change it for the world. Um, so I, I think... Once she gets a little older, it'll probably get easier. She's in school, and you know, I've got a, more, a lot of time to work. Yeah, yeah. But. Yeah, because I know. I, I, I knew, you know, just juggling that. I mean, obviously, I watched my dad do it, and he was a freelancer with three kids, and um, that's a rough one. To, it's totally doable. Yeah. Totally doable. You just got to find that, that. And it seems like, you know, for you, too, the teaching was kind of nice, even though you don't do as much. I, I, and, and I knew that kind of would happen at some point. Um, but, but we miss having you around more, obviously, because, you know, your presence is awesome. I mean... Um, not only a great, you know, illustrator, artist, but just what a, you know, such a gifted teacher. All of our yeah. teachers are phenomenally yeah, compassionate and cool people. people. So um, that's one of the things I love about doing this because, you know, um, all of us have been kind of incognito. I mean, it's yeah. kind of been this under the radar kind of odd school that people hear little rumors about right. and things about, but no one ever really gets to hear from the horse's mouth, so to speak, you know, what, what it's really like. So I'm really happy to have you guys yeah, chatting about cool it. Idea. So future goals will probably be fine art, right? Fine and art raising, down the road. Raising the family yeah. and getting that under control and everything <laughs> settled down, which yeah. I think is really good. Um, what's next? So next on the easel, is it the big six footer, the crazy oh, yeah. commission? Is that what you're... That's on the easel. Um, and then I've got that dog portrait we were just talking about and then a couple magic cards. So quite a bit, you know, even though 
any cover work or anything coming up, or is that something you want to get more into? Right? I'd, I'd like to do more cover work. I, I really enjoy doing that. There's a client I, I really enjoy working for, Paizo. They she gives me a lot of liberties. Sarah is the art director, and she's she's great. Um, she kind of just gives me a description, lets me go, and um, I have a, I feel a lot free, a lot of freedom with her, and I really enjoy doing that work for her. So, okay, so um, yeah, Lucas. Uh, you know, one question I've not asked the other instructors, which I, I've been meaning to, and I'm going to start putting it on the list, is um, you guys are such a big part of the atelier, and as far as teaching, you know, what, what, what have you learned from it? What motivated you to want to do it? Because I usually handpick you guys early on, but I, it's hard to know. I mean, I've, you know, I, I'm now good at picking the right people, but I wasn't always. And when I picked you, I mean, I guess how did you feel about it, and then how has it changed you, and what have you learned about uh, you know, teaching, and what do you like about it? Um, you know, when you, it, of course, when you're a student coming up, I mean, it's, it's always, I think in the back of probably most people's mind, oh, I'd like to teach sometime or, or you know, yeah. it's a prestigious thing to want to teach for, to be able to teach for the, the Watts Atelier. And, um, I, I thought it was a really cool, uh, opportunity when you asked me and I, I, I immediately took it up. I said, oh yeah, I'll definitely love to do that. Um, I think a lot of it is being able to give back what you've, what you've learned. And that's just probably... The, the number one thing is helping people and seeing them grow. It's so rewarding. I mean, you've oh, seen yeah. it for a long time. It's crazy. So that that was that's a really cool part of it. And it, it in a way, it's kind of like uh, a master's. Um, it's, it's my way of continuing to study without doing classes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you kind of segue from a full time student into working, so you don't have as much time to dedicate to classes. So um, you know, you've given us the opportunity to teach. It's allowed us to kind of um, be a little choosy about what we can take as far as work and um, um, just to kind of have that extra time to grow mm -hmm. um, because there's stuff you'll learn teaching that you can't pick up when you're just studying on your own. Um, just fi helping fix other people's mistakes is, is it's huge. And the questions they ask you, I mean, they come in out of yeah. left field and make you bend your brain around trying to think like, what? what? Yeah, you know, right. what, 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 I've yeah. never thought of it that way. But um, yeah, I mean, you just, you, you grew into it. I mean, we used to do the dual teaching thing, which mm -hmm. was phenomenal. That was cool. Um, for those of you who don't know, I mean, early on we would, we would have a 30 person class and we would, uh, have 15 person on, on each side. So each teacher would take fi uh, 15 people and we would co-teach, but we'd also demo at the same time simultaneously, which is something I've never seen any of the ateliers or schools do really. Mm -hmm. But I think it was really nice to be able to ramp you guys up yeah. and it's hard now because it's three to the wall. Yeah. We don't really have that luxury anymore. So we, uh, we, the new, ramping up new teachers has become a lot more of a challenge, yeah. you know, and finding them. So. I mean, you guys really came up during kind of the Halcyon days or the, of the school when it was really um, just, and it's still in really good, you know, um, shape and it's doing great, but it was back when it was really in a just crazy yeah, amount of people you. here and stuff. So I'm kind of liking it a little bit more intimate. So it's kind of, mm -hmm. it's kind of nice. But yeah, it's, it's been great to have you involved in the school. I mean, I just, you Thanks. know, I don't get to tell you guys enough how, how thankful I am to have yeah. you guys around. But well, um, It's an honor being part of yeah. the school. It's such a special thing. And uh, it's great. I mean, yeah. I'm very fortunate that I was in my backyard. You know? Yeah, in the right place at the right time. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I tell a lot of people that. I was the same way and felt very much the same way from the school I went to, the California Institute. It was uh, a game changer for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it really, it really changed my life. So, um, well, anyway, you know, thanks, you guys, for tuning in. And, again, this was uh, another one of our, our interviews with our instructors. We'll have more to come. So make sure you just stay tuned to the Watts on Watts blog, and I'll be posting different things like this. Um, uh, we also filmed one of the orientations, which we'll be putting up soon, and uh, just kind of a glimpse into the inner workings of the atelier and and how it functions. And maybe so, you, if you're if you're on the fence or intimidated by coming in, don't be, because you can see that everybody's really kind and mellow, and it's just a great environment. So we'd love to see you in uh, one of these future terms, maybe or maybe a workshop or something. But uh, but anyway, thanks again for tuning in, and and we'll we'll uh, we'll be doing more. Take care.